Welcome to the High Ground Podcast. I'm Stevie W. And I'm Callum. And we're back with Mandalorian, Mando Thanks. Watch, with Season 2, Episode 1, which is... The Marshal, directed by John Favreau. Is this his... I'm sure I'm right. Don't, I might be wrong, but is this his first one as a director, then? I think it is, yeah, yeah. I, I thought he directed one in the first season, but I don't think he did, did he? No, I think this might be his first one. So, welcome to the Star Wars universe again, John Favreau. Yeah. You know, uh... I like how they... Uh, what did you think for a start? Oh, no, I thought it was fantastic. It's probably one of the best... Like, I think it's probably the best episode so far, actually. Like, there was just so much... It didn't It didn't go straight back into what happened at the end of last season. It just gave us a sort of breather, you know, literally a Monster of the Week episode. But, like, it was great just, like, there was so many callbacks to A New Hope. And, you know, as soon as they said, oh, we're going back to Tatooine, I thought... I love it when they go back to Tatooine. But yeah, no, no, it was a fan. It, it was felt like a proper western as well. Yeah, again, oh, yes. like you know, he's a marshal and and yeah, no, I thought, I thought it, was, it was such a it was a great opening. So if there's more of this to come, then uh, I, shine me up. I uh, I watched it. Then I was thinking about it later. You know, I was literally thinking about it all the time. Like, no, wow, was, this was you know you could, like you said about Tatooine. Then R five. Then you see the back of the, of his head. The bad movie. And it's like, oh, yeah. is that ninety four. It's like, yes, because I, I, you know, got a soft spot for R five. I had I, to pause that actually, because I thought I'd seen it out of the corner of my eye, and then I rewound it and thought, is that that's got to be the R five, hasn't it? Yeah. Like, and uh, then the Banthers. I've got a soft spot for yeah, Banthers, like Banthers as well. And I was like, this is good. This is good. Then it's got me thinking. You know, then it got me thinking because he's looking for. When you say about looking for spoilers, it right now spoilers. Yeah, one hundred spoilers. Spoilers. So this is they're looking for a Mandalorian, and I heard of, of the casting of uh, Tamara Morrison. I was thinking, couple to treat. Actually, I didn't know he I was, was in it. Yeah, I, I just thought I I knew I thought it was going to be like when they said Tatooine and the Mandalorian. I thought this is a Boba Fett red herring, and then when you get there and you see Timothy Oliphant and he has the armor. Yeah. On, I knew it wasn't Boba Fett because like too skinny it, yeah and and just i just know it wasn't and when i i mean i, I love timothy oliphant and he he is good at playing sheriffs he did it in deadwood and uh wasn't justified he, wasn't he in uh uh once upon a time in hollywood as well yes yeah yeah again played yeah no he's good at, he's he's really good at for some reason at playing like a martial character i don't know why and then um when he takes the helmet off i thought oh, that's but i mean right away you know it's boba fett's helmet because yeah. we said about the, the dent, dent didn't we yeah. um yeah no uh, but yeah no uh, it was good I th- it was kind of like a sort of a seven samurai sort of thing yeah. wasn't it where they have to get the two sort of um no not not seven samurai more like sort of dances with wolves yeah. where they have to get the two sides together to fight against the common threat i really like i thought that it was great to see the crate dragon as yes. well finally one thing the one thing that that, that, uh, that got me was uh what seeing timothy oliphant's uh get his name on it uh, Cobb Van. Yeah. First thing I saw when he had that helmet, uh, I was going through uh, my head, he's got to take that helmet off, he's got to take that armour off, and give it to the Mandalorian, that's not his armour. Yeah. Because it has to say, and that's it. This, is a listen, it, this, is, this is eliciting an emotion in me that he should not be wearing yeah. that armour. I mean, Boba Fett is just a character. Yeah. And anyone can wear it, but when you know it's not, you can tell through the body type that it's not Boba Fett yeah, underneath yeah. the armour, it's like, take that armour off. Uh, it was just something it was agitating me about him and it works perfectly because he should not be wearing no. that armour even though he's a good guy and he's yeah, actually yeah. you could argue that his character has got a, is, is a hero as opposed to Boba Fett which is just a rogue bounty hunter and uh, you could argue that he's using the armour he, well he is he's using the armour for good to save a town yeah. he's the sheriff like Batman <laughs> yeah. yeah but it's not his armour to wear no and but, if anyone has read any of the Expanded Universe stuff, Cobb Vance is actually a character from one of the 2015 novels called Aftermath. Um, and it's one of the ones set after Return of the Jedi that set, sets up episode 7. And uh, there's like interlude chapters with, with like random people from throughout the galaxy. And this guy's on Tatooine and he's sort of like tracking down these mercenaries that have murdered like people in this town. So it's kind of like, the I, I don't know if he's supposed to be like the canon version of that guy but he's very similar he's and I knew it was kind of him yeah yeah um, but no he was, that was pretty cool and I always thought I'd like to see more of that guy like on and we finally did so I, yeah it's great I, 
the, I think it, it was really, really good seeing more of the sand people as well yes. and seeing their language, oh, yeah. like uh, their sign language for a change. And, and they don't take the mask off as well, which is, Very I don't good. ever want to yeah. see what they look like underneath. But uh, Carl Van and Mando both have a moral code and they yeah. live by their moral code. So yeah. they are, you know, uh, even though he, uh, he's wearing he's wearing Fett's armour, he is still, you could argue that he's got like the whole Mandalorian spirit as well yeah, inside yeah. him. So, a law so, like a lawman. Yeah. Yeah. And he's got the same yeah, as as the actual as actual the Mandalorian of the title. So, but I just I, like from start to finish, I was like, this is yeah, this is, and that ending. You know, as soon as oh, as soon yeah, as I saw yeah. as soon as I saw uh, Tamura, and I was like, that's it. I know who the director is. It's John Favreau because they have the director credit at the end. Then when it was, had it, the names were like, ooh, John Leguizamo was the the yeah, he was unrecognizable, wasn't yeah. he? Yeah. I am. Um, at, at the end, I was kind of when you see him from behind, and it's yeah. just like this bald guy, it's like desert gear on. And that, um, I thought, who's this? And when he turns around, for a second, I was kind of like, oh, we haven't seen this guy before. And then yeah. uh, I sort of looked more closely, and I was like, holy shit, that's Dango Fett! Like, yeah. And then by extension, holy shit, that's Boba Fett. Hopefully, I mean, I hope it's... it is. I hope it's not just a clone or something. Yeah. No, I, I I think because it's it's too. It's you know we'd have another another clone on the planet that would be a great swerve. Yeah, yeah. Even if it isn't, it's great. Even if he isn't uh, Boba Fett, I mean, if he's gone his IMDb page, he's actually classed as Boba Fett. I think it is. I mean, because yeah. they've done the whole in Rebels, they did the whole clones that were still good kind yeah. of thing, and um, I don't think they'd do it again. But um, no, yeah, I I got really big Dune vibes as well. Did you? I've I've like only seen so yeah I, it's, June is one thing I will be checking out. Oh yeah, the, the film it. I mean, it's also an influence for Tatooine, isn't it? It's got to be. Yeah. I mean, th- I like that the that they made the crate dragon kind of like a sand shark. Yeah. You no, know, I got really big Jaws vibes as well from this episode. Yeah. Where the way they trap it. And oh, the uh, harpoons. Yeah, 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 and the like just just come trying to come up with a way to take down this bigger, like natural force thing sort yeah. of thing I really really sort of, I thought that was great because you always saw the only thing you've ever seen before of a crate dragon is a skeleton isn't it yeah, in the, yeah. In the that's original. a new hope is it the special edition or the original original uh, yeah, R2, the original, 3PO yeah. and Tatooine it's always been there since yeah. 77 and you kind of think wow that's big but apparently that was a baby yeah. in a new hope so this is like a full grown uh, yeah no I, I, I was just, everything about it was just like just had your attention constantly didn't it there hasn't been a bad episode in no. this whole series yet I I will go back to the whole uh, the whole John Favreau thing. Uh, again, again uh, John, uh, John, I actually watched back the John Leguizamo scenes. Mm. Uh, just to, you know, his hev- his voice is processed. So yeah. like that ah, because I love Chef and I'm like going. I think it's deeper, isn't it? Yeah. And I like, how did I not realize it's John John Leguizamo? But you can't tell at all, no, though, can you? No. It's, uh, but uh, I just watched Cowboys and Aliens recently. So John Favreau doing the whole uh, Western. Again, yeah. It's like. Ah, it's um. I'm pretty sure the the species he plays is in the canteen, isn't it? The one-eyed thing. Yes, it is. is. It, is I it? watched it. Yeah, it is. It's another kind of callback to A New Hope. Yeah, and and also the the Gamorrean guards fighting in the ring. I, yeah, that, the axes. I think that's cool. I really think that's so yeah. cool. You know, what, I'm gonna go with uh, five star episode. Oh, like one hundred percent. Yeah, I, I mean, if this is just like a sort of kicking off episode. I can't wait to get back to the whole Moff Gideon stuff and yeah. the Dark Saber and just seeing the stormtroopers. I mean, in the trailer for the season two, it was just you see stormtroopers yeah. again, don't you? So it's always a joy seeing the white armor clanking around, isn't it? See if they can shoot this time this season. <laughs> yeah, they were they weren't too bad in that last episode. The, the sure finale, but they were still yeah, still shit. The two the two on the speeder bikes oh. was my favorite. You know they're gonna get it just for kicking the ass of the uh, yeah. the child. The child, yeah. He was um. He wasn't really in it very much, was he? He was he was sort of like in the background yeah. a lot, wasn't he? It's like him saying, "Well, he's a yeah, breakthrough character, but we're not changing the story for yeah. the breakthrough character." Yeah, which is brilliant. It yeah. was nice seeing the lady again with the tit droids. Yeah, I, I liked her. She was she was quite funny. Um, yeah, no, but everything was spot on. Just any time you go back to Tatooine, it's gonna be, it's gonna be good, isn't it? And nostalgic. And nostalgic, yeah. So uh, that's our Mando watch. First one of season two. Stevie W. And Callum. <coughs>